I know the American people, and you are wide awake, but on days like today, I need a little Zoloft. No, I need a bucket of Zoloft. Obama's budget for fiscal year 2011 was unveiled today, and it is staggering. And I'll wait until the bottom of the hour. You won't believe the games they're playing. It's $3.8 trillion, and the deficit is projected to shoot up to a record $1.6 trillion in this budget year. Everything in this country is up in the air. Our budget, our security. You know it. You know the soundbite that I played for you over and over and over again, and this is the critical piece. You can look at all the problems, but we've always had a sense that we were on the right track, even when, you know, the Carter administration or the Bush administration, whichever one you hated, you knew we were going to make it. But there's some bigger problems now because of debt. And this statement from the president, the fundamental transformation of America. Is away from fundamentally transforming the United States of America. Yeah, I know. I'm not really sure what that means exactly. Are you? Do you know? I mean, here, White House. This isn't a trap question. That's just. Could you explain the fundamental transformation of America thing? What? 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 What does that mean? I mean, there's a couple of different ways we could take it. Could be a wonderful transformation, away from lies. Maybe he means Obama. You know, he's, he's just. He's just going to give America an extreme makeover, Founders Edition. We're going for maximum freedom. Maybe that, maybe that could be it. Or he thinks that the old American system doesn't work and he wants to try something new. A government that will sneak in universal health care. I wouldn't put it past. Did you hear what Nancy Pelosi said over the weekend? We go through the gate, the gate's closed, we'll go over the fence, the fence is too high, we'll pole vault in, if that doesn't work, we'll parachute in, but we're going to get health care reform passed for the American people, for their own personal health and economic security. Mm. She knows better than the American people, because who's building the fence? Yeah, the American people. Now they've decided that they're going to possibly use sidecar legislation. I'm sure this is what our founders had in mind. While I didn't call it sidecar legislation on this program, I told you for months, do not allow anything to pass from this Congress or this administration because they are building something. I don't know what they're building, but they are piece putting pieces of whatever it is they're building in all of these bills, and we don't know it. Once again, we see it coming through. Here they go. It doesn't work in one bill, so they'll break it up. Health care. They'll break that bill up and pass it in different bills and get it to the president's desk. Well, since I don't know what fundamental transformation is and what this president is shooting for, and I don't think you do either, since the president has said in the past that the Constitution is fundamentally flawed, since this president has surrounded himself with out-and-out -out radicals, some of them are socialist. One of them was a communist. Isn't it reasonable to ponder the question, what kind of transformation is he shooting for? I have pondered that question for many months, and I don't have an answer. But I've also pondered this. If you wanted to use emergencies, if you were that kind of person, if you were a radical, and God forbid you wanted to take control of a country because it was the right thing to do. The people were too stupid. In an emergency situation, what would you need control of? How would you do it? How could you make sure that you could just lock everything down? You could, you could control it, and then you could transform it. This is just the list I've come up with. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Manufacturing and industry, financial, media, communications, the military, energy, and education. Got it? Education is really more long-term. I know this is crazy talk, to be even talking about command and control, but we have to think out of the box here in this way. If I would have asked you how fragile were you, was your freedom, if I asked you that question on September 10th, 2001, how fragile do you think our country is? You would have laughed at me for even asking. You would have said, oh, no, no, we're fine, that's great. How about if I asked you that on September 11th or 12th? What would your response be? Let me ask you that question today. How fragile is our country? How fragile is our system and your freedoms? Are we becoming more free or less free? Better yet, how secure and strong is the republic? 
If you've listened to me on the radio for the last five years, you've heard me explain a theory that I've had, and I've hoped I was wrong a long time, but it seems to be coming together, called the perfect storm theory. It's this theory, and all these stories I just told you about all kind of fit in, and I hope I'm wrong, but, he, but it is coming more and more accurate every day, and here it is. We will be overwhelmed with financial, debt, security, energy, political problems, and then there would come a time where someone would say, now, and there'd be a blow. One emergency or crisis that would change the world as we knew it, and it would put our most sacred freedoms to the test. It would... It would test those people that would like to use a crisis to take freedoms away. Now, I've never had in that perfect storm theory that we would have anybody step up to a dictator, and I don't think we are going to have that, and I hope to God we don't. But I'm concerned about a couple of things because of what I know about history. If you're one of those people who can say, oh, it could never happen in America, I want you to remember some of the radicals the president has placed around himself and some of the things that those radicals have said. Watch. We're trying to use the power of persuasion. And if that doesn't work, we're going to use the persuasion of power. No, we're going to change the whole system. We're going to change the whole thing. We're not going to put a new battery in a broken system. We want a new system. We kind of agree with Mal that political power comes largely from the barrel of a gun. You never want a serious crisis to go to waste. We took names. We watched how they voted. We know where they live. These are the people advising our president. You know about his other influences as well, uh, Jeremiah Wright and Bill Ayers. Unthinkable, unthinkable that someone in a time of crisis, someone might approach the president and say what the journalistic, revered, progressive Walter Lippmann said to FDR when things went down in 1933. He said this, the situation is critical, Franklin. You may have no alternative but to assume dictatorial powers. FDR, thanks goodness, made the right choice. He didn't turn into a dictator. But Americans knew how close they were by the end of his administration to getting one. This is why two years after FDR's death, two years, Congress passed the 22nd Amendment to officially limit the president to two terms because whether Lippmann said it or not, Americans could sense it. We're headed towards a dictatorship. I don't know if you sense that today or not. I hope you don't. I'm not asking you to go down that road. I'm asking you to do this. How secure is your freedom today?